Number 23. A certain five cent coin contains five grams of nickel. What fraction of the nickel's atoms' electrons removed and placed one meter above it would support the weight of this coin? All right, the atomic mass of nickel is 58.7, and each nickel atom contains 28 electrons and 28 protons. All righty. So uh, here we have a nickel coin, all right, and... We know that this thing has a mass, as they told us, of 5 grams. So 5.00 grams. We know we need that in kilograms, so this is just going to be 5 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms. All right, let's keep that in mind. Now, if this thing has a certain mass, it has a, then a weight, right? Now, the weight of this thing, and I'm going to put a little dot here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little, a little coordinate diagram here, free body diagram. We know then that the weight of this thing is pointing down, right? And we know that the weight is equal to mg, right? So it's going to be the mass of the uh, nickel. So the mass of the, uh, yeah, ni. So the mass of the nickel times gravity, okay? You know, why don't we just find it, actually? Let's just get a number now. So we're going to, the mass is here, 5 times 10 to the minus 3. So simply take 5 times 10 to the minus 3 and multiply that by 9.8. And what do we get? So the weight here is going to be about 0 0.049 newtons, okay? So in my picture over there on the, uh, right hand side, I'm going to draw in a weight vector pointing down. Okay, and this is the weight of the nickel. This weight here, this had a value of 0 0.049 uh, newtons. Now, we're basically going to take some electrons now, all right, out of the nickel, and we're go going to place them above the nickel, right? So when we do that, when we place some number of electrons up here, think about it, the nickel's neutral, if we take electrons out of it, and we place those electrons above it, this, or actually even before we place it above it, as soon as we take the electrons out of the nickel, what charge does this coin become? It becomes positive, right? So if this thing is positive now, has a net positive charge, because there's more protons than electrons, then when I take those electrons I removed and put them above, there's now an attractive force between this group of electrons and then this coin, right? Meaning that those electrons are now attracting these this positive coin. So there's an upward force, right? There's an upward electrostatic force, and I'll, I'll color that in blue, basically. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. I'll call it F sub E. So this electrostatic force now, F sub E, has to beautifully balance the weight, right? If the coin is to float, basically, and that's what it's saying, it's supporting the weight, so the coin is a set, we can think about it as floating. So what that means is that the electrostatic force that's being produced has to equal then the weight of the coin. Okay? So why don't we write that now on out? So we can say that the electrostatic force here will equal the weight of the nickel. Okay? So why don't we expand on the electrostatic force? So the electrostatic force is going to be K times Q1 times Q2, right? divided by the distance between those point charges squared, and that's going to now equal the weight. All right. And what are they actually asking? Yeah. So they tell us they're removed, and these now electrons are placed one meter above, right? So they do tell us a distance. So they tell us the distance between those electrons and the protons here is going to be uh, 1.00 meters. So we know the R, right? We know the K, K is a constant. That's 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. And we know the weight, right? We found that. So now it appears that we have two kind of unknowns, right? Well, not exactly. They're actually going to be the same thing. So remember that these Qs represent the charge of one item and the charge of the other. So basically it's the charge of the coin. I can, you know what I'll do? I'll let me write these, this out with some subscripts. So this will be the charge of the coin, and then that's multiplied by the charge of the electrons above it, okay? And they're actually going to be equal. Uh, let me explain it this way. Pretend you have a th pretend you have something and it's neutral, so there's five protons in it and five electrons, three, four, and five. If I remove one electron, right now, remember, if I remove one electron, okay, remember the charge of a single electron. A charge of a single electron is negative one point six times ten to the minus nineteenth uh, coulombs, right? So if I remove this negative charge here. This charge now by itself has a value of negative 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, right? 
Now, let me ask you a question. What's the net charge then of this ball? Well, it has five protons and four electrons. Essentially, what, how we can think about this is that these protons and electrons that I'm canceling kind of neutralize one another, right? One's positive, one's negative. So essentially, this structure has one net positive charge, right? So if this structure, if this ball has one, one positive charge that isn't being canceled, and a positive charge has a value of positive 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, then the overall charge is just equal to that excess positive charge. So notice, this ball and this, elect this electron over here are the same charge. So as soon as I pull out electrons, right, I basically, I basically create a new charge, and that new charge will equal the old, will equal the new charge placed uh, on the ball or on the object or on the coin. So basically, what I'm trying to say is that these things are basically equal in magnitude. Now they are opposite in sign, but it's the absolute value. So just just plug in plug in a. It doesn't really matter what you plug in here. Just plug in Q. Okay, you can call it Q of the coin, you can call it Q of the electron, the total charge of the electron, it doesn't matter. All right, so basically now, that's one. That's the key insight here, is that this is really times Q squared then, because they're the same. So I can call it both just Q over R squared is equal to W. Solve this thing for Q now. We, we know everything else, right? We just talked about that. So this goes down here, right? Put a little division sign, and then simply square root both sides, because we got to get rid of we have to get rid of the uh, square. All right, and let's do that. So here, let's get rid of that. Just gonna reorganize it ever so slightly. So here's the formula for the charge. And this now represents the net charge, okay? So let's do this. Uh, okay, so Q here, so Q will equal now uh, square root of, what do we got? So the weight, 0 0.049 times then uh, R squared. So the distance was one, right, squared, all divided by then not uh, 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. So what's the charge here? So square root of 0 0.049 times one squared, obviously that's the same, divided by then 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. And we have a value here of about 2.33, 2.33 times 10 to the minus sixth coulombs. Okay, so what we just found now, let's go back to our picture. So what we just found over here is that this area, this localized area of negative charges has a net negative charge of negative 2.33 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. And this coin then, let me just get rid of this arrow now, this coin then has a net charge of positive 2.33 times 10 to the minus six coulombs. If you now did the problem forward, meaning, or backward, I guess, because it's backward to this problem, but if, if I gave you these two charges and I told you they were separated by this distance and I asked you to find the electrostatic force between them, you would have found that to be 0 0.049. It would equal the weight. I didn't try it, calculate it. So now, okay, so we got that. Now, what are they actually asking? So what fraction? Oh, great. We can't just tell. We can't just give the charge, right? We have to find out what fraction of the nickels atoms electrons. Now, so let's. Okay. So now, what? Let's first get some space, right? I need space. I need some space. We need some space over here. How are you guys doing today? Hope you're doing well. Making it through your course all right. All right. All right, so now, uh, okay, so why don't we find, first, let's find the total number of electrons that have been taken off, okay? So the number, how do we find that? Number of electrons removed. How do we find that? Well, we know the charge of those that group of electrons, so we can simply just do a conversion, right? Can we just simply do negative 33 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs of charge, and we know that every single electron, one electron has a value of negative 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Wouldn't this tell me the number of electrons? Sure, right? So we're going to take that value and divide it by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, and we realize we come up with a value here of 1.46 or so times 10 to the 
minus, uh, excuse me, times 10 to the 13th electrons. So what I just found is I just found that within this, you know, area, there's going to be 1.46, 1.46 times 10 to the 13th electrons. All right. That's how many were, were removed. Now, that doesn't tell me the fraction yet, right? But if you think about it, fraction just means part over whole. So if this is the amount that was removed, all I have to do is now simply take that value and divide it by the total electrons that were present. Okay? Now, how do we find the total? Well, that was the whole point of what they gave us down here now. So now we got to find the total, <laughs> total electrons that were present. Okay? So let's start with the five grams of nickel. So this is basically a chemistry conversion, right? So we got five grams of nickel. We can simply now multiply that by the reciprocal of the atomic mass because it's, it tells us 58.7 grams of nickel for every one mole, one mole of nickel. And then getting rid of, since we're dealing with nickel, it's an atom, so we can use Avogadro's number. So one mole of nickel is equivalent to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of nickel, right? So notice these units would have canceled. And when I do the math here, I would know the number of atoms. But I don't want to know the number of atoms. I want to know the number of electrons. Well, they told us that each nickel atom contains 28 electrons. So what does that mean? So that basically means now that if I were to multiply this now uh, by simply the uh, number of electrons, or we can say this, that every single atom, one atom, contains 28 electrons. Notice how the atoms would cancel, and this would finally give me the total number of electrons. So let's do it. 5 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd times 28 divided by 58.7. And we get a value here of about 1.43, 1.43, yeah, 1.44, I guess. 1.44 times 10 to the 24th. Okay, times 10 to the 24th. All right, so now basically this represents the total total number of electrons. Okay, total number total number of electrons that were removed. No, excuse me, excuse me, not total number of electrons. This represents just the total number of electrons that were present. So if this is the amount that was uh, that was removed, and this was the total that we could have removed. What's the fraction that was removed? We'll simply take the 1.46 times 10 to the 13th and divide that then by, so basically I'm just doing this division here. I'm dividing these two by one another and then divide that now by the 1.44. I'm using the exact values here. So this works out to be now simply, I'm going to write the answer on the top. So this works out to be 1.02 times 10 to the minus 11. All right, to 1. So a little itty bitty 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 fraction has been removed. Now, so that's the answer. How you know? And we might also be thinking about well, wait a minute. As as we move the electrons, don't electrons have mass? And if we're moving electrons, you know, out of we're taking electrons out of nickel, isn't the weight of the nickel going down? So isn't this like wouldn't the weight after the fact be less? Well, technically you're right. Yes. And why don't you actually try to do that? Tell me what the weight would have changed by. All right, and then. Think about, did it even matter? All right? It, it won't. Just, you know, foreshadowing for you. All right? It won't. It's so negligible, it doesn't matter. Uh, but, yeah. All right, guys. So, thank you very much for tuning in. Appreciate it. Please remember to help us out. If this video helped you at all, give us a hand. Hit that subscribe button. Tell your friends. And we look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.